Welcome back, everybody, to Hard for Games. We are your hosts. I'm Tony. And I'm John. Today, we're taking a look at Snatcher for the Sega CD. It's this futuristic cyberpunk sort of police mystery visual novel game with light gun sections. I never thought I would say I played a visual novel game where you get to shoot robots. Made by Kojima, as a matter of fact. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's get started. So before we get into the story, the history, all that stuff, we wanted to talk a little bit about why we are reviewing this particular title. Let us know a little bit why it's been on your bucket list in terms of reviews. I have heard about it for ages, and I've always wanted to play it, but it's, you know, one of the legendarily expensive games mm -hmm. for that platform. Uh, but whenever I'd look up reviews, uh, people filmed in composite, uh, they wouldn't have the light gun. In fact, I don't think almost anybody used the light gun mm. for their reviews on YouTube. A few people played on a CRT. A lot of people emulated and stuff like this. So mostly they focus almost exclusively on the story, which yeah. is quite good for this game. But I wanted the full experience. So we did the full Sega Genesis, Sega CD, 32X, because why not? Hooked up via RGB to a PVM, and the PVM then outputting to our OSSC Line so doubling. that yep. everything is just the best possible video quality we could get. Mm -hmm. There really isn't much of a caveat for our review at all no. as far as the hardware goes. Story-wise, as we mentioned, this is a cyberpunk thriller adventure text-based game. And it's weird to say that it's a thriller when it's text-based, but it really is, because it constantly keeps your mind active, and it is very, very engaging. It uh, builds atmosphere extremely well. That it does. Think Blade Runner meets Kojima. Essentially, a snatcher in this game is a artificial intelligence, a robot that steals a person's body and imitates them. And it's your job as Gillian Seed to find these Snatchers, and terminate them. And yes. as a little added twist in the gameplay, he is an amnesiac who has, well, lost his memory, doesn't know who he is, doesn't really recognize or know much about his wife. The same thing has happened to her. And he's trying to learn about himself as he's going through this process of being a, basically, a Snatcher killer. Yes. So he is a junker. A junker. Are the people who track them down. It's all about tracking them down and figuring out where the heck they're coming from because they just suddenly appeared three years ago. Mm -hmm. And they seem to just be getting better and better at replacing people. And they seem to not be wanting to do it for the good of anybody except themselves. Yes. There have been different versions of this particular title throughout the years, probably like, you know, the 90s. But the story has somewhat changed during this time based on the number of acts that have been included. But John, let's go through the different versions of this particular title. Okay, so originally it was developed to be a six chapter game. And I assume it was going to be kind of like some of the older like shareware games where you'd get chapters of them yeah. uh, slowly. So for the PC-8801 and the MSX-2, Unfortunately, they developed most of those six, and Konami was like, D dudes, uh, you gotta cut the costs here. Yeah. You can publish two. So it's basically two of a three-act structure. Mm -hmm. So it's like two-thirds of the first game you were given. And if and when you do get to play this game, it's a horrible cliffhanger it ends on. Almost as bad as the actual game ends on. Like, it's ridiculous that they released it like this. Yeah. But then the game did fairly well, so they made it like this SD Snatcher RPG thing, and they kind of worked with Kojima to be like, all right, so we kind of want to include the third act in this yeah. one. So finally, people got to see the third act, which is kind of like, imagine a two-movie like uh, setup where you've got 
two major three-act structures, mm -hmm. now you get the full first movie. Spoiler, you never get the second one because Konami are assholes. <laughs> um, but they finally decide, okay, well, we want to make something for the PC Engine Super CD. So they're like, what if you go back and you remaster Snatcher and you get to do voice acting, you get to do CD quality sound, mm -hmm. you get to add your third act back in, mm -hmm. you get to do all this cool stuff. And that was the version this one is ported from. Mm -hmm. So they're very similar. There's a few localization and censorship things. Mm -hmm. There's some slight nudity changed. Uh, one character is changed from being 15 to 18. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a boob of a naked yeah. dead snatcher that's covered up in the Sega CD version. Mm -hmm. There were references to a whole bunch of sci-fi and action films that are replaced with Konami characters. You're in the wrong joint, buddy. Forget about the check. Just get out of my place now. So there is a little bit of debate between PC Engine and Sega CD because PC Engine could do more colors than Sega CD could. But the PC Engine doesn't quite sound as good. Now for the actual CD quality sound, it's basically identical between them. Uh, except the voice acting. Mm. This is the only big change. Call me Gillian Mika. Okay, Gillian. I'll open the main door and show you around headquarters. I say that the, the Genesis has better sound, but it's realistically your taste. They're pretty close. Yeah. I just prefer how the Genesis sounds over it. Most of the soundtrack is actually off of the Genesis sound chip. Uh -huh. There are parts that are CD audio. Okay. But the parts where it's the sound chip, those are like the most stark differences. The light gun is the part that really, really makes the Sega CD stand out from all the other versions. Mm -hmm. It's something that just seemed so weird that I had to try it. Just that part where they were like, it's this mystery game and you get a gun. There are moments in the game where you're going through your text adventure, but then boom. Yeah. An enemy appears and you have to fire him before you're utilizing your D-pad or your keyboard or whatever. And it's annoying as hell. And it's annoying as hell. So they were like, well, let's utilize a light gun and kind of invigorate and vary up the gameplay a little bit. Yeah, so like you're talking with somebody in their apartment and eventually you realize that it's very, very likely they're a snatcher. And so as you're playing, you're like slowly inching your, your hand over towards where your light gun yep. is. And then eventually, like, as you're talking to this person, you are now certain they are, and they find out that you know, and immediately you have to, like, drop the controller, grab the the justifier. You have to press the start button to take off the safety and then start shooting. So it's tension built. It's interesting because you think, okay, great, you know, the, the Sega CD version, wow, this is great. Did they ever bring it to the PlayStation, the Sega Saturn? Well, yes, they did. So, of course, it must be better, right? Well, that was 1996. So, unfortunately, that was the period where they're like, you want to release a 2D game in 1996? Uh-uh. We gotta, we gotta shoehorn something 3D in there. Somehow we gotta get some FMV. We gotta yep. throw some stuff in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and watch the intro for the very first time. This is like a totally different game. Oh no. Uh. Imagine waiting <laughs> six years and you pop the disc in and this is the first thing you see. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've seen from that era, but it's not great. And then finding out that this version isn't even going to have anything extra. I mean, it wasn't... Like, for, so for example, if I've never had played a 16-bit version of Snatcher, I would have been like, okay, you know, this is fine. This is standard 32-bit fair, but like knowing what it came from, yeah. I think was more of the offense than what it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was just kind of, it was just kind of all this detail in the pixel art and then you strip all that away. 
Now, aside from that, there were some other versions, like a radio... 2011, they release a radio drama, and it's about Jean-Jacques Gibson, uh, the hmm. guy that you find dead in the first act, four years before. So this is before hmm. the Snatchers even appear, and it's about the lead-up to the hmm. Junkers having to come around. And apparently there's a translation of it, and it's out there now, and you can listen, and there will be subtitles and all that stuff. And I want to listen to that really bad. I just didn't have time to listen to it before we saw this part. Yeah. We've already talked about the gameplay quite a bit, but let's talk about it just a touch more, but a little bit more in depth. Now, as you're doing, you're investigating, you're selecting different options, and essentially you're looking at people, places, and things but oftentimes over and over again to try to get the answer that you want to, to be able to move on. There is a problem where it's like, well, I see there's a beer in front of me. I'm gonna look at that beer. Well, it looks to be a beer. Okay, so well, I'm going to investigate the beer. Yeah, it's a beer. And then you'll like move on and be like, oh, what the heck? Wait, let me look at the beer again. Wait, what's that written on the beer's uh, mug? I didn't see it the first time. And there's like a scratch in the glass <laughs> that I actually noticed on this. That's terrifying. But, you know, then it'll be like, you know, the second time around, it's like, ooh, now I should investigate the logo that's on there. Yep. And it's like, okay, uh, that's kind of annoying that I had to do it the second time. Now, I assume that because this is a much more popular genre in Japan at the time, mm. that was completely normal. But as a um, cheeseburger gobbling Westerner, I was completely unused to this. And mm. the last time I dealt with anything like this was the King's Quest games back mm. in the day. And I just didn't think to do that. Yeah. And so it could occasionally get frustrating and you'd miss out on some stuff. But just be aware that sometimes look and investigate a couple of times and then things might unlock. Yeah. And just just be aware of that. Yeah. And I would, I would say that would be kind of my only issue with mm -hmm. the gameplay. I think that the investigations overall were very fun. As we mentioned, light gun sections were very fun. But the thing that really made the game for me was, yes, the story, but also the presentation. Yeah. My God. Atmosphere. The presentation. Holy crap. It was probably the best looking 16-bit game I had ever seen. Hideo Kojima and Tomiharu Kinoshida, who worked on this together, like sort of designing the game, mm -hmm. uh, their idea was they sort of wanted to think of this more as a movie or an anime than as a game, which is why the actual gameplay aspect is slightly more minimal and it's much more a focus on mm. storytelling and atmosphere and how to deliver those things to you. Mm -hmm. And that you definitely get. And it's one of those few times where they're like, don't worry, we're gonna minimize the gameplay a little bit. And you play it and you're like, that's actually pretty good. I kept wanting to play because it was just, the story was so interesting and the, the visuals were just so stunning the music was fantastic oh yeah it look up the soundtrack just listen to it sometime yeah. it's really good it's it was great it was riveting i don't listen to video game music on the side i know a lot of people do yeah, sorry, There's but some I would listen to this. Yeah. I honestly would listen to this on my in my spare time because it was just that good. Overall, I think that it utilized the Sega CD extremely well. I wish that more people would have used CD add-ons like this in that period. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the PC Engine did, but... In the U.S., we didn't we, get a lot Our of mileage was much different. Our CD media was like Sewer Shark and Night Trap and what's what's another just FMV game? Uh, there's that one that looks like a colonoscopy. Microcosm. Yeah, Microcosm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, like it's just, it was just, just a mess. It does, it does, it does. Yeah, it does. Another little nuance of the gameplay here is that it's actually kind of a buddy cop game. Your yeah. sidekick or side character is Metal Gear, a robot assistant that helps you analyze your environment. It's your save functionality. It's comic relief. Metal, introduce yourself. 
Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mop 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Oh, he's cute. Uh, thank you. I think he's turning red. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But, He's uh, the way that you make video phone calls. Uh, he can do some analysis and he mm. can do all this different stuff. But it, it's kind of interesting that he's a reference to Metal Gear. And you find out that this game takes place in the future of the Metal Gear universe, mm. which is pretty cool. But he is also then referenced in a Metal Gear game later on because the Metal Gear Mark II in Metal Gear Solid 4 is based on Metal Gear Mark II in Snatcher. Except, unfortunately, that one isn't a buddy cop and it isn't sentient. There's a big old loop. There's yeah. a big old loop of references, essentially. But Metal Gear is a great little character. Yeah, and every time he was in danger, I was actually worried because I, I quite liked him. Mm. You, you end up really liking the characters. Yeah, which is a testament to the writing. Yeah, that and that fabulous voice acting. I don't know, maybe one in 10 lines for each person, maybe less is actually voice acted, but it's, mm. uh, I think, something like an hour of voice acting for this game. Mm. You're well capable, so takeoffs and landings in narrow areas present no difficulty. A flying tricycle, huh? I just came in on one of these things. We have been assigned this vehicle for use in our investigations. Overall, I think this is an extremely enjoyable, extremely expensive game. You know, it, it, it's... <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Uh, it, it's it's one of those things that commands a very high price, but when you you put it in, you're like, wow. I mean, I, I, I am not a text adventure guy, and I never have been, but this legitimately impressed me. I can see why this thing is so much money. Mm. Like, there are some of these games that you get to play and you realize it's just that they're rare or just some odd part of history. But this one, I get why people have such a deep emotional attachment to yeah. it. I was kind of pissed when I finally finished the game and I realized that, that that was it. Yeah. And that this part of the story that I had just watched ended in 1992. Yeah. And we're still waiting to find out what happens in the second half of the story. We talked about what we thought about the game, but let's talk about the future of Snatcher because you were telling me a lot of the reviews that you had read or, and also watched were pre the split between Kojima and uh, that pachinko man maker. Yes, that, yes. What are they called? Konami, oh yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> the future is bleak, but you did have some ideas and thoughts. Here's why I think Konami should one day consider making it. Mm -hmm. VR, everybody talks about it. It's supposed to be the cool thing. Mm. And right now, it's kind of like the 90s where everybody talks about VR, but what do you do in it? Yeah, it's uh, they're gimmicky. Yeah, yeah, there are plenty of pretty fun games, but I would call all of them a gimmick game. So what keeps you in a game? It's partly playing it and also something that has to string you along, like story or progression or something like that. Yeah. And I think that is why sort of like the old mystery games could be a good idea. Mm -hmm. So you could walk around in a 3D space and I think VR could be a really cool way to do sort of mystery text adventure sort of things in a modern age. Yeah. I mean, you could have like a controller, like, you know, you're grabbing stuff with your controllers, but you could also have some buttons for interaction, like a chat menu yeah. uh, with your sidekick or something. And I think if Kojima is involved, I'm sure he's gonna find some trolley stuff to do. Oh yeah. I'm sure Metal Gear will go like a, well, maybe you should check your computer, Gillian. They're like, well, I guess we'll have to go back to the office. Well, no. Check your computer, and I'm sure you need to take off your headset, and your screen will have information and stuff like that, just to be like, ah, oh, yeah. 
quite literally breaking a fourth wall. I think there's plenty of potential, but... Yeah, I definitely think so as well. I just think that the problem is the rights. Yeah. Because would you really want a Snatcher without Kojima? That would be the trick is, like, you, no one else is goofy enough. Yeah, I He's mean, like an anime character who came to life. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously tons of other people were involved, but it was yeah. his, his initial brainchild. If it's Konami, what they'll do is they'll take the idea, but bastardize it, and it'll be a VR snatcher rail shooter. If Kojima had the rights, he would make a legitimate game that was very quirky and fun and utilize the VR and this and that and like had all these like different nuanced elements, but uh, Konami would just, it would It'd just be, like be a rail shooter. Rainbow shooter. the game Yeah, but they the, made a couple of years ago. And, and then well, the, they didn't make it, at, but it was made. Yeah, and then at the end, it would just be you having to play a pachinko machine in VR for like three hours. <laughs> Again, big thank you to Retro Talk of Video Games who allowed us to borrow this game. Big thank you to Dan, the owner, and also Dan, one of our Hard for Games cast members. Yeah, Dan Hutchison allowed me to borrow his Justifier so we could play this. Big thank you to Corey Snesse, who's also been on the yes. channel, uh, for lending us the cable so we could do this properly. But yeah. <sighs> thank you, sir. So this was a truly a team effort, but I'm glad that we finally get to do it. I know you've been wanting yeah. to do it for quite some time. It, the, the stars aligned yes. for that one. So thank you, everybody. We would cheers, but we are all out. But uh, thank you all for subscribing. Ring in that notification bell, all that good stuff. And we'll see you all next time. Games.